Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Olimide Dejuja. I'm standing in for Victor Matthias, and this is Channels Beam. So today we'll be talking about uh, Dino Melaye's recall and uh, the impacts, the possible impacts it may have on Nigerian democracy. Uh, I have with me Yaya Yakubo. Yaya, please. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, yes, I can hear you. So um, please introduce yourself and where you're calling from. Okay, uh, my name is Yaya Yakubu. I am calling from Abuja. I'm a okay. political behavioral with uh, Nigeria Nile University. Thank you for having me. All right, thank, thank you very much, Yaya Yakubu. Henry is also here with us, but friendly is not. Uh, hello, Henry. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm here. Okay, so um, could you please uh, introduce yourself as well? Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Henry Okelwe. I am hanging in from Abuja. I'm a social and political commentator. I write opinion pieces for the cable, omojua.com, and henryokelwe.com. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you very much. Henry, let me start with you. As we are uh, talking about uh, the process of recalling, recalling a senator or a pu pu um, public office holder, and we are taking um, Dino Milaye's uh, case as our uh, case for consideration. So we, uh, how, how do you see this playing out? If I may start with that. Well, uh, how do I see it playing out? I, I would rather want to be on the side of optimism and on the side of uh, due process rather than on the side of, oh, this is how Nigeria politics is. I expect this particular uh, process to go further than the others we have had in the past. Uh, we have had uh, recall processes that has go that have gone as far as the referendum. Uh, Hello, Henry. Uh, it seems to have lost Henry there. Let me let me come to you, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yes. Yes. Okay. I think Henry is back on. Now. Okay. Uh, my my connection broke off there. So as I was saying. We've had recall processes in the past, about three or four, that have gone as far as the the referendum. Henry, and they, Henry, Henry yes. Sorry, pardon me. To, pardon me. Please, the orientation of your phone. Good. Uh, okay, I think we're back. Okay. Yeah. So, as I was saying before, the orientation interrupted. Um, we've had recall processes in the past which have gone the full the full length of the process as far as referendum as 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 referend as a referendum being held. I hope this one also gets that far. There is really nothing new about Dino Melaye's own case. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, um, representatives that have been called that, that have been facing recalls. Have gone to court. Dino has gone to court. INEC, at the end of the day, had to go on with the process and call for a referendum. So let's let's hope that this one gets there. The only difference is just that the National Assembly has not tried, did not try to interfere in the other processes. At least did not openly try to interfere in other processes like this this particular one, which makes it a bit uh a bit unique but i expect i expect the whole thing to go through the court uh the national assembly considering the fact that constitutionally they are powerless in this issue for INEC to see this process beyond verification and as far as the referendum if at the referendum whatever happens we, we shall all have to abide with it all right, thank, thank you very much. Um, Henry, uh, yeah, yeah, let me come to you now. 
So, hi, um, Juno Malaya has gone to court, yes. and the court says we should maintain status quo. Now, the question is, what is status quo? According to Juno Malaya, is you know it means something. Then, according to you know those calling for uh, him to be recalled, it means something. Else. So, if I may ask you, what? How do you see it? Well, uh. Thank you very much for having me. First, I would say that I listened to some commentary on the radio about, uh, you know, going to court through his lawyer, Ezekumi, and uh, seeking an uh, interlocutory injunction to stop this uh, process. You know, and there's another judgment that was passed recently also by uh, a country in high court, as well, uh, resident in Abuja as well, by uh, one justice so who said that, Yes, pending the motion that has been filed by Dino, all parties involved to uh, maintain the status quo. I think this notion of status quo for Dino and uh, his lawyer, it may mean that there should be no interference in the, uh, uh, there should be no further, uh, how will I say that, INEC should not make any further effort to proceed as far as the verification has been done. There should be no further effort. They should all hold on to whatever they want to do pending uh, 29th of September, when the uh, motion will be heard in court. And for the constituents uh, uh, who are calling for this recall, I think, in my opinion, I would like to state that first, I'm not uh, personally read in law, I'm a political scientist uh, by discipline. So I would uh, comment on this from a perspective of a political scientist. I would say that, as Henry, Henry actually said earlier, this is not the first time this is happening, but the anomaly in this case is that the legislative is trying to only interfere in the process. Well, first of all, this is a big uh, step forward for us in our process of consolidating our democracy as the most populous nation in Africa for the uh, constituents that actually vote somebody into power to have the feel that I, this person is accountable to me and is responsive. And the fact that we have uh, initiated his recall has shaken him up to the extent of him uh, talking about it on the floor of the house, I think it is a plus for our democracy. It shows that we are beginning to have this bottom-up approach towards power that you don't... Five, ten years ago, it was uh, less likely impossible to initiate such a process. And the uh, legislative in question, you know, has been shaking up this much to the extent of running to court and all that uh, other measures he has taken. Well, I would like to say that for Dino Malay, who has uh, spoken countless of times on the institution of INEC that was into power, is uh, legally elected as a senator of the year. I think he should allow the institution that he believed in so much to carry out the process without necessarily going to court. You know, this issue of Nigeria is always seeking an interjunction in the process. It is, if the court decides otherwise, it means that democracy has been defeated in this uh, essence. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Henry, let me come to you. Um, looking at the uh, history of recall, you know, uh, how, how, how would you rate, how should I put it, uh, what is the success rate of um, recalls in the, democracy, in the history of democracy, you know, both in Nigeria and, and all over the world? vis a -vis how we expect or what should what we could we should expect your mic, your mic is mute all right um well what your question is uh, as to the success rate of uh, recalls in Nigeria yeah. and other places in the world yes. Well, I, I, I will limit myself to the knowledge I have about the Nigerian space and speak only about Nigeria. Well, so far, Dino, Dino Melaye would be the, the fourth attempt at a recall that has gotten to the point of INEC actually bringing out a timetable for the process. The last three even though they got to the referendum, uh, according to analysis made by the cable NG, 
they couldn't get enough of the electorate to come out, enough, enough of the constituents to come out on the day of the referendum to, to cast their yes or no votes. So it, it has been a 0% success rate in Nigeria so far. All of the attempts before now, no uh, representative has been successfully called back. Uh, let, let, let me add before we go on, I do not have a dog in this fight. I'm not from Kogi State, neither am I from Kogi West. Uh, and I actually would not be bothered if Dino is called back or not. But my, my concern, my, 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 my uh, interest in this is the deepening of our democracy. If a senator or a representative or even a member of a state house of assembly can be called back successfully, it says a lot about the maturity of our democracy. That is where I come into it. So like your question, like question you asked, it's a 0% uh, success rate for calling, for recalling uh, a member, a, a representative. But the fact that people have managed to try and they have gotten as far as a referendum, uh, even though it looks very daunting, that you can actually recall a senator, like Yaya said, is a plus to our democratic process and the deepening of our democracy. Thank you very much, Henry. Um, Yaya, let me come to you. Uh, recently, when uh, the senator Dino Melai was raising a motion regarding the recall process, a distinguished senator also made a comment, uh, something like he said, it's a dead on arrival. I don't know if you came across it. How, how, how would you read something like that? How would you, what, what do you have to say to something like that? Uh, well, first of all, I, I did not uh, happen to come across such material either on the net or anywhere, but uh, this goes to talk how to elucidate the cultural context in the political leadership in Africa in the sense that we place more emphasis on the individual more than the institution itself. As a Senate of the Federal Republic, you are supposed to uh, show all form of constraint. And even though you have a personal stake at this matter, for someone, for a country that is trying to, we are trying to strengthen our institutions of democracy so that we can bring about a government that uh, clamors for representation and responsiveness. You are not supposed to make such alterances. You know, I didn't come across it, but if it did happen, it is unfortunate that a distinguished senator would make such alterances that it means you are personifying power rather than institutionalizing it. This is one of the major problems that we have in Nigeria. If our institutions are working uh, autonomously by themselves, he has no right whatsoever to make such statement. You know, if we were in a more civil society, I think he would be called to account to uh, account for this kind of statement you make. Because by saying it is dead on arrival, it means you are undermining the the the, uh, the powers that has, the constitutional powers that the INEC has to carry on with this process. You as a Senate or as an individual, you have no uh, right of any constitutional backing to make such alterances, except you are speaking from your own personal perspective. But being a public officer and a speech that is being publicized, I think it is unfortunate for us. But again, like Harry said, and I also said earlier, this process, regardless of how it's shown that we as Nigerians are imbibing and building a, a democratic culture, this is something that is lacking. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, if you tell people to come out and let's uh, take signatures to try to recall a senator. Nobody, the, the mindset is that it doesn't matter. My vote or my voice or my signature is not going to uh, have an effect. But now we have a change in this mindset. We are beginning to imbibe this culture of the government is responsible to us and they should be accountable to us because we mandated them to represent us. So with this mindset and this uh, frame work that we are moving in this direction, I think it is a very big plus for uh, institutionalizing and consolidating on our democratic advances. Thank you, Yaya. Um, Henry. Hello, Henry. Okay, so um, 
we've also had the House of Reps calling the governor of Kogi State, summoning him to, you know, come and uh, speak about the uh, recall process. The, does the House of Representatives representative have the uh, authority to summon a sitting governor? Okay, uh, before I, I respond to that question, I, I would like to buttress uh, Yaya's uh, position. The comment, by, the comment by the, the, the uh, distinguished senator who said, uh, Senator Ikwerimadu, who said this recall process is dead on arrival is uh, an unfortunate one, but it also shows panic. It shows a fear in the ranks of the National Assembly. Like uh, another distinguished senator said during the uh, Code of Conduct Bureau uh, controversy, Senator Olujimi of uh, Ekiti State, she, made a, she, she gave a proverb, if I might put it like that, as she said, if your house is on fire, if your neighbor's house is on fire and you don't help him or her to go put out the fire, you might not find someone to help you to put out the fire when your own house uh, starts burning. What Ekwere Madu just said there was simply uh, an, an, an acceptance of the fact. It, was, it betrayed the fact that he knows that if Dino Melaye is successfully recalled, then none of them is safe because it becomes a chain reaction. Their constituents too would suddenly realize that, oh, we can do this too. So him saying that is part of a bigger um, agenda of scuttling either by pressure because they have no constitutional or legal power to stop INEC. So it, it's by pressure, making pronouncements, trying to confuse the, the electorate. So it's that's what he has said has no basis in the constitution. Everything he has said has been fact-checked and found to be false. Now, to the question you asked about if the National Assembly has the power to summon a state governor, a sitting state governor, I am not a lawyer, but uh, I am someone who loves to do research. And I have gone through the constitution of Nigeria to see the, the extent of the power of the National Assembly vis-a-vis states the farthest their power their powers go is if there's a crisis in the state house of assembly for the, the national assembly has some power to take over the affairs of that national assembly of that state assembly until issues are resolved but i did not find i could not find anywhere in the constitution of 1999 constitution as amended which says the National Assembly is sitting governor. I think that would be a violation of the, the separation of powers. Uh, I, 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 again, like I said, all of this just points to panic in the National Assembly because people know that if Dino Melaye is successfully recalled, then there's a possibility of the constituents or of the electorate in a state or in a constituency to suddenly realize they have power. Or in the case of the insinuations, which I will call it insinuations by Dino Melai because there is no proof whatsoever that it's the governor of Kogi State that is orchestrating this problem. I will just take it as an assumption by a panicky Dino Melai. But if we're going to take his panic into consideration, it could also mean that state governors could also suddenly realize that they actually have powers to control senators or representatives. So it's it's it, it, the, 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 the National Assembly summoning, well, I, did, I couldn't find it anywhere where they actually said, even though I saw it online, but let's say it, was, it actually happened that the National Assembly summoned a sitting state governor. I think they, have, they are stepping out of bounds. It is unconstitutional, and when it's unconstitutional, then it is illegal. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, please pardon me.
All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Henry, for for your speech. Now, um, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. In bringing this um, discussion to a close, uh, do you think, in your own opinion, do you think this recall pr process, you know, can be successful? School in this sense means different things for two different people. For the constituents and for the normal life, it means different things. For me, my interest in this is that it shows that we are consolidating upon and trying to deepen our democracy. And that is what matters in this sense. We have the, now we are aware that we actually have the uh, legal binding and the constitutional uh, backing to call back people that we feel have underperformed or have not met our expectations as electorates. That is what matters for me in this context. It's not whether you know like call back or no uh, personal interest in that whatsoever. But for me, my uh, in my uh, curiosity that has made me to be interested in this matter is that it shows that one, as a democratic nation, we are becoming more aware of our powers as citizens and the power is now if 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 citizens have the uh have the consciousness that we can actually shake up somebody that we that we are fighting for the us we can shake up and cause rancor in this legislative in abuja i think it is a good omen for us and like henry said the the instance of Madu saying that uh, it is dead on arrival it signals again that these people are becoming conscious that yes if this happens it is less likely to it's likely to be a snowballing effect and it is going to you know take over people that their constituents feel they are not uh, performing or underperforming so either ways it is good for our democracy and i think we are in the right step towards uh, consolidating upon our relatively young democracy thank you very much yeah yeah now um yeah henry in closing uh, the success of this uh, recall process or not, what impact do you think it will have on our democracy as a whole? Like, if it is successful, what do you think it will mean for our democracy? And then if it's not, what do you think it will mean for our democracy? Uh, well, there, there, there are two uh, angles of success that you can actually pick out in this whole um, conversation. There's a success of will the, the forces of Nigerian politics allow INEC to see this process up to the point of carrying out a referendum. Then the second uh, 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 ind success indicator will be if a referendum is heard and the constituents in a simple majority vote yes. Will the Senate, led by Bukola Saraki, allow the Constitution to run its due course by when the, the, the certificate of recall is presented to the uh, Senate and the Senate accepts it and Saraki walks Dino Melaye out of the hallowed chambers? So those are the levels of success. The, 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 the first level of success, which is will the political forces in Nigeria allow this process to allow INEC to carry out, to move this process up to the end of the referendum. If that happens, it is good for our democracy, which means institutions, instead of people, are allowed to work. Because the, the, the Senate or the National Assembly has no control over INEC beyond the confirmation of the INEC chairman. That is one. Two, if at a referendum, the, the constituents of uh, uh, Kogi West decide that indeed they are tired of Dino Melaye in the Senate and they vote yes in a simple majority. And simple majority means if it is 11 people that show up on that day, for example, and six vote yes, and five vote no, the people that vote yes carry the day. If they decide on the day of the referendum that they are tired of Dino, and the, the yes have more, and a recall certificate is sent to the Senate, 
that Bukola Saraki will not play hanky panky. He will go by the dictates of the constitution he has sworn to uphold and to protect. So those are the two uh, uh, su success factors, and those are the two the, the implications of that is the constitution either suffers or the constitution is still maintained as the the uh, 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 the how how do they say it now the the most sacred document that we all abide to as a nation. Okay. So that's that's my that's my closing. Uh, all, all, all right, all right. Thank you very much, Yaya Yakubu and uh, Henry, for joining in in the conversation. And uh, hello, can you? Thank hear you me? very much for having me. Oh, yes, thank right. you very much for having me this afternoon. All, all right. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Olumidi Odejide. I am standing in for Victor Matthias. This is Channel's Team. Until next time.